Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, your one-stop website for all of the day's latest church apostasy news and end-time news. Now, Trad Cat Night is featured all over the alternative media circuit. I'm doing my best to keep you up to date on all the latest happenings from around the world as we head closer to the fruition of the third secret of Fatima. Now, folks, please click that subscription button right now on YouTube so you can get all of the latest videos sent directly to your email. Uh, and if you can, folks, click that PayPal button in the upper right-hand corner of the website, and please get behind this effort. This is an information war, as you know, and I uh, really appreciate all your prayers and support. And we're also now found on SoundCloud, so we're picking up momentum there. Just search Trad Cat Night. And today, my good friends, is February 1st, 2018, and to kick off uh, February, have a very special guest, first-time guest and many of you seen him uh, all over YouTube lately. Got some really great talks uh, as it relates to uh, Trump, what's going on uh, with the latest with uh, false flags. I've got a bunch of questions here, and I want to pick uh, Robert's brain. But my, my guest today is Robert David Steele, and he's a former American and spy ex-CIA who was recommended for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017, the founder of the Open Source Intelligence Movement, uh, and today the form foremost proponent for open source everything engineering he's a leading voice for creating a post western economic information and engi engineering paradigm that can destroy the deep state and deliver peace and prosperity uh to all we really could go on and on with our guests he really needs no introduction i know the majority of you are going to know <laughs> who robert is to begin with and so how are you doing first of all today uh robert and uh i know we, we've got a lot to cover here and so we know that you, you've led an interesting life as a spy, uh, second-ranking civilian in the uh, Marine Corps uh, Intelligence. You've been a CEO, top reviewer in nonfiction. You've appeared in films even, uh, as we mentioned, being recommended for the Nobel Peace Prize. You're also a leading advocate uh, as it relates to exposing the deep state pedophilia, uh, human trafficking, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what have you learned maybe to kick off this program in the 65 years on this earth that you can uh, share with all of us? Wow. Um, well, first, let me say I, I'm pretty sure 90 percent of your audience has never heard of me. Um, what I've learned in 65 years. Wow, that's that's an awesome question. And I immediately think of everything is a lie. Most of what we're being told by the academy, by the media, by the government, by corporations that are selling us poison. Almost everything we are being told is a lie. Absolutely. Uh, I, I completely agree with you there in that area. Now, one of the reasons why I say uh, a decent amount of people are going to know who you are, Robert, is because you are an anti-Zionist. That's one of the things that I try to uh, cover here on this show. We've had some of the top... Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, exposure of Zionism and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but getting back to our, our original premise here, given what you have learned, what do you hope to accomplish in what remains of your life? And, and what are your priorities going forward? Wow. Well, I've been for 40 years, the CIA has been fighting me. I mean, as a spy, I realized how broken the spying system was. And then as the second ranking civilian of Marine Corps intelligence, I discovered that 96% of what we needed to know was not secret, not in English and not online. And CIA has never wanted to come to grips with that because it would take away 70% of their budget. The same is true for NSA. I just posted something with Bill Binney at phibateiota.net. We both agreed 70% of the secret intelligence community can be gotten rid of tomorrow and we won't miss it. It's just a corrupt cesspool. What I want to do with the rest of my life is create the world brain and the earth game and connect every single human being on the planet, including the 5 billion poor, with all information in all languages all the time so that we create essentially the newosphere that was uh, envisioned by uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Uh, what this really means is that we achieve self-governance on the foundation of full information at the local to the global levels. Uh, Eleanor Ostrom got a Nobel Prize for showing that the only people who really can make rules that are sensible are the local people, and the only people who can enforce rules in a compassionate, persistent manner 
are the local people. I am totally against the UN's Agenda 21, globalization, the uh, Soros, Koch brothers, all of these people. They are all trying to basically squeeze us to death. Uh, we need to restore local sovereignty and individual sovereignty, and we do that by getting a grip on all information and all languages all the time. Well said, sir. Now, give us your assessment so far uh, with Trump. What are you seeing? What are the pros? What are the cons? How do you see things playing out here in the United States maybe over the next few years? I can tell you within the traditional Catholic community, it's kind of a 50-50 split. There's some who say he's the real deal. The other just kind of say he's just, you know, another puppet being used, uh, you know, by the right, if you will. Uh, well, you know, I'm a I'm a lapsed Catholic who has the distinction of having been a Jesuit Colombian altar boy. Um, I know the beast. And one of the problems that we have is that at the upper reaches of the Catholic Church, the Pope, the white Pope and the black Pope, the corruption and the satanic influences are so deep that I'm really beginning to think that we're going to have to break the Catholic Church up. Uh, and the American uh, bishops are going to have to decide if they want to have a Catholic Church that is honest and does not abuse children, or if they want to have a Catholic Church that is a money laundering facility for the popes. Um, Trump gets an A-plus from me for being an accidentally elected president, the great disruptor, who is going to make possible an independent president with a coalition cabinet, a balanced budget announced in advance in 2020. In terms of performance, Trump gets a B plus from me in certain select areas, including the Supreme Court, and a C minus to a D in everything else. He has broken almost all of the promises he made on the campaign trail. We've published a Trump report card by Paul Adams, which is very, very specific. It names all the promises, and it shows where Trump is on all of these promises. Now, let me state clearly that as long as Trump is our legitimately elected president, and until such time as he makes it clear that he is subordinate to the deep state, I will support Donald Trump. I have published a very important piece, which the president has read, um, which your listeners can find at uh, tinyurl.com forward slash Trump triumph. It's three moves in 90 days that would destroy the two-party tyranny and connect the president to 200 million voters overnight. Uh, it's a two-way channel. It would create an open source agency, an election reform act that would elect a whole new Congress uh, and a grand strategy conversation that would allow us, among other things, to very quickly nationalize the Fed, legalize marijuana and hemp, um, close down all of our military bases overseas, end the income tax and substitute a transaction tax, uh, and do a number of other things that will never, ever be passed as long as the two-party tyranny works for the deep state. Yeah, well said. And to kind of backtrack just for a second here, Track at Night is going to be your premier traditional Catholic channel actually in exposing this apostasy in the church. And I'm certainly well aware of the Jesuit influence, the Zionist influence. Uh, you know, obviously Freemasonry plays a part. And we, we believe that, yes. Uh, and Knights of Malta. Yeah, we've been taken over. There's no doubt about it. We're, we're actually expecting a formal schism in Rome here soon, and I could go into a whole other spiel. That's actually what I do when I uh, do media appearances. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that you brought up that particular aspect. Now, um, let's say this. Let, let's, let's just hold to the thesis that Trump is the real deal, because I know many conservatives believe that. Do you believe he'll, he'll be the fall guy? I mean, we're kind of on the verge of this economic yes. collapse, uh, yes. revolution, World War III. You know, will the, you know, the liberals or Democrats come up from behind and say, oh, you guys couldn't get the job done. We need to, you know, move I'm forward. Not so sure. I'm not so sure about fall guy, except that I do believe that the Democrats will take the House and they will probably also take the Senate, uh, particularly if John McCain dies or resigns. Um, Julian Assange has come out on record in writing and said that Mike Pence is backstabbing Donald Trump every single day. I agree with that. I think that Pence is about to go on a cross-country tour ostensibly to fundraise for the Republicans. What he's actually going to be doing is stabbing the president in the back. At every single stop, Mike Pence is going to be saying to everybody, I'm the guy that's going to be running in 2020. I want your vote. I want your money. I want you to support me. Donald Trump is going to self-destruct. 
That's what Pence has been caught telling people like Jerry Falwell Jr., okay? Pence cannot be trusted. He's also got some major issues coming from Indiana. Um, if the president does not sponsor the Election Reform Act and get a whole new Congress that's honest and that can make evidence-based decisions, then I believe that the Congress will conspire to impeach and expel President Trump and leave us with deep stater Mike Pence. This is not a good thing. Now, how do you think specifically, you know, what will be the play, maybe is a better way of wording this, uh, in terms of who the Democratic Party will put out there? I mean, is there uh, a potentiality of seeing Clinton again? We, we heard comically, what was it, just a month or so ago that Oprah might run? And I, when I was doing some media appearances, I said, you know, who's going to be her sidekick, Bill Nye the science guy? I mean, it's, it's kind of getting almost comical. Well, <laughs> there's actually something to be said for Oprah replacing Pence. Uh, <laughs> but... I'll tell you, there was a time when I really liked Joe Biden, but the pedophilia rumors are coming up, and I'm now of the view that Joe Biden, Joe Biden is best left uh, far outside of the, uh, of the view of the public. Um, the Democrats right now are severely hurt because on the one hand, they have Chuck Schumer, who's an agent of Israel, uh, and on the other hand, they have Nancy Pelosi, uh, who has got to be one of the most evil, stupid people on the planet. Uh, so I'm not sure the Democrats can reconnect with the blacks. I'm not sure they can reconnect with labor. They have totally screwed over every disenfranchised group they've ever claimed to represent. Um, and at the same time, I'm seeing some very troubling indications. I helped Trump in sessions get access to the NSA on class of, uh, unprocessed data. And I have said on the record that Trump now has every every name of every traitor, every pedophile, every elite white collar criminal. Um, but I'm seeing some troubling indications that he, he or people who represent him with access to the NSA data may now be bla blackmailing Democrats to cross the aisle and declare themselves as Republicans in order to avoid their being outed as traitors or pedophiles or criminals. Uh, I would be very, very troubled if Trump used the NSA data for political advantage rather than to clean house. This is a major concern on my mind today. Now, in relation to Trump's Middle East foreign policies, if you will, there, there are a lot of people kind of concerned of what's going on uh, in Jerusalem. We now see the Zionists and, and Arabs uh, now, you know, the nation's taking sides on the whole Jerusalem uh, issue. Um, maybe you could speak and elaborate more on sure. Trump, Trump's foreign policy, and again... Absolutely. Absolutely. First off, Trump is at a severe disadvantage because everybody is lying to him. And Rex Tillerson is, is at a severe disadvantage because he's being lied to. The Zionists own the State Department. And the Zionists and the State Department have not bothered to tell Rex Tillerson or the president that Jerusalem is off-limits. Jerusalem is explicitly a separate entity that is not included in Israel's boundaries in any way, shape, or form, whether under the United Nations mandate or the Balfour Declaration or anything else. In fact, Henry Seidman, who is my choice for ambassador to Israel, and I would send him heavily armed, uh, Henry Seidman just wrote a brilliant piece that we just published in Phi Beta Iota today, which points out very, very clearly that anyone speaking of moving our embassy to Jerusalem is an uninformed idiot. Jerusalem is off limits. It's off limits to Israel as a capital, and it's off limits to the U.S. embassy because it's off limits as a capital. So Trump may be a genius. He may be using that move to Jerusalem as a way to just unite everybody against Israel. But my bottom line is that the people who are advising the president and the secretary of state on Middle East matters are all Zionists. Mm. You cannot get an honest deal in the Middle East as long as the United States has 44 bases surrounding Iran, <laughs> is spending tens of millions of dollars supporting Saudi dictators who are pedophiles at every level, uh, and is paying Israel to develop more and more nuclear weapons and biochemical weapons and and other things. We're paying $30,000 a year for every man, woman, and child in Israel. This is insane. 
Yeah, and that's the question I raise when I'm bringing on those who are well aware of the, you know, if you want to call it conspiracy, but how Zionism kind of fits into the whole equation of the New World Order. And that's what I ask. Is it truly America first here or is it Israel first? Uh, James Perloff and I talked about this within this past week. There will be many who argue, uh, Robert, that U.S. is just nothing else but a military arm to advance greater Israel uh and, you know, specifically when we're talking about Syria and Iran, that situation, maybe you can elaborate on what you're, think, what you're seeing in that area. But is, is this a play to uh, get central banks in Syria and Iran? There are many who would argue that. Would you argue against that? Uh, no, I, I, you know, look, that's a clever. I mean, this, this, is, this is a game at multiple levels. The only people that profit from war are the banks. Everybody else loses. And Goldman Sachs made some very bad bets on oil futures. Goldman Sachs desperately wants a war in the Middle East. Um, I would say that the United States of America is Israel's shiksa, which is a code term for a Gentile girl that spreads her legs and doesn't count. <laughs> we are all shiksas. Remember the USS Liberty. That's all you need to know about how Israel views the United States of America. Remember the USS Liberty. And then you can fast forward to 9-11, which the Zionists began planning in 1988. They spent a year deepening the channel outside of New York City so that their collaborators, including Rudy Giuliani, could rapidly destroy the crime scene and export all the evidence. Um, I have written an article called Zionism in America, Seven Strikes and Counting. And it's easily found at tinyurl.com forward slash uh, Zionism dash seven, the number dash strikes. Zionism dash seven dash strikes. I've also written an article on the Zionist Google Gestapo run by Ashkenazi Jew Eric Schmidt. Mm. Um, he has created hashtag Google Gestapo, my term, which is so good at censorship, crowd stalking, and digital assassination that he's trying to sell it to China and the Chinese are interested. Imagine the irony here. A censorship system, a digital censorship system that digitally assassinates people who question the official narrative, that is so good that the communist Chinese are thinking about buying into it. Hmm. Now, my article that outlines the detailed uh, Zionist censorship system, which includes Amazon, which is now banning books and reviews that uh, are politically incorrect, which is to say anti-Zionist, uh, that can be found at tinyurl forward slash Google Gestapo. And one of the things I want to do with an open source agency and a world brain and an earth game is create a global um, post-Google internet, one that is distributed, encrypted, and cannot be censored or manipulated. Yeah, we see where, we see the direction that's going. I don't, I can only speak for myself, Robert. I can't even post my own blogs on the Twitter. I'm literally banned there. I've had my videos down. As a matter of fact, I went on YouTube today, and my video or, or my my channel's not even there. I don't even know what's going on. So I got to figure out. Oh what no, I'm they're doing. they're they're deleting you. But even worse, they're also shadow banning. For example, I subscribe to Sarah Westhall and Jordan Sather and a few others. My yeah. subscription is worthless. Because I do not get email notifications. Yeah. They are doing everything they can to both delete people like you and shadow ban and demonetize everybody else. Yeah. Oh, by the way, they're also richly eligible for a Title VII class action lawsuit. And one of my frustrations with Trump and Sessions and, and, and the people around Trump is they're not treating information in the public with respect. They're allowing Google Gestapo to continue to work as it worked under the Clinton and Obama administrations. Now, as an ex-CIA, uh, you know, I know you, you've obviously worked with the NSA. You know, how concerned should your everyday American be with this, you know, emerging police state, if you will? What, what is Trump doing? Is he doing anything to kind of destabilize uh, the network? I mean, it seems like these days we've got our sm smartphones spying on us. I mean, I'm sure they're listening in on this conversation on Skype and this You've got the 5G also. Look, the bottom line is, unless you become a senator, don't worry about it. <laughs> NSA is collecting every single piece of data. And the silver lining of having every piece of data going back 10 years, every email, every phone call, the silver lining is that Trump was able to go in once we showed him how to do it and get the name, states, uh, places, and cash amounts for every trader, every elite pedophile, and every major white-collar criminal, particularly Goldman Sachs. 
Uh, these are people that manipulate interest and in, uh, foreign exchange rates when they want to make real money. Um, the, the whole banking system is completely out of control. And certainly the Federal Reserve needs to be nationalized sooner than later. But your average American need not be worried about that. However, they should be very worried about 5G. They should be very worried about electromagnetic pollution. Mm. They should be very, very worried about the fact that we're being dumbed down and poisoned. I mean, literally, as, as, a, as a human species, there's the 1% and there's everybody else. Everybody else is being slowly migrated toward extinction. Um, this is not a, a very healthy situation. Our food is poisoned, our water is poisoned, our air is poisoned, the ground is poisoned. Decisions are made every single day that are against humanity. Uh, and that's why I want to create a smart nation in which the 99% get a grip on information and start voting with their purchasing power. Well said, sir. Yeah, we try to cover that at Tradcat Night, this culture of death or system of death, however you want to label it. Uh, we s seemingly can't get out of it. We know these globalists simply want to reduce uh, the world's population so that they can control and manipulate us more. Once again, folks, I have with me today the one and only Robert David Steele. Get to his website, robertdavidsteele.com. My next question for you today, Robert, is what is the latest with some of these memos coming out? I just checked. I think it was Fox News, and Trump is set to declassify uh, the latest surveillance uh, memo. I think it's tomorrow morning. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if you can maybe break down in layman's terms. Well, yeah, let, let me make this very, very simple. And, and Bill Binney pointed this out to me. It is U.S. federal law that classification may not be used to conceal a crime. Under U.S. law, Congress, the president, and the agencies are required to declassify any document that has evidence of a crime by a federal official. Not only should the congressional memo be declassified, but so should every other memo be declassified in, in the Department of Justice, the FBI, all of the emails, and so forth. Furthermore, once those FISA memos and other things are declassified, Robert Mueller's investigation is dead in the water because it's fruit of the poisonous tree. Hmm. Now, we've been talking about uh, Israel here a little bit. One of the questions I have for you, and, and this really draws a lot of interest to those who follow uh, this apostolate, is your take on what really happened uh, in Hawaii. Um, I, I know I want, I want to allow you to, to really dig into this, but you believe that it was probably an Israeli sub, uh, that something really did happen. It wasn't just uh, – it wasn't as the mainstream – narrative uh, was said to be basically and at this point <laughs> we all should be very leery of what comes out of the mainstream media but maybe, maybe tell us what happened robert from your perspective well i think I, first off i have no direct knowledge uh, but what i would encourage people to do is go to phi beta iota uh, and look up hawaii missile we have i think 13 updates right now the going in proposition was that it was an Israeli missile, it was successfully destroyed, and the government has been lying uh, about what actually happened. Um, I'd encourage people to read all of the different possibilities. One possibility is that they actually just screwed up and hit a false alarm. Another possibility is that uh, a rogue element of the Chinese fired the missile and the Chinese government destroyed it. Um, what we really don't know is what happened. What we really do know is that the government is lying to us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we were just uh, speaking a few moments ago on, well, just the kind of the current overall state and what's going on in the Middle East uh, in Jerusalem. What is, what is the more likelihood, uh, Robert, as it relates to false flags Will we see one here domestically? There, there's many people concerned that we might see one in, in a major city. I think it was Guccifer, that international hacker that said, you know, he had broken into, I don't know what it was, CIA, CIA files or whatever it was. And he said that Chicago and a city in Pennsylvania were on the map for some kind of, you know, nuke attack, ultimately to drag us into war with Iran or whatever. Well, Guccifer, the last, the Guccifer I know is a Romanian taxi driver who spoofed John Podesta with very old equipment. This was Podesta being stupid, not Guccifer being smart. Um, look, Israel has a Samson option. 
Israel has demonstrated with the USS Liberty, with the assassination of John F. Kennedy, where Arnon Milshan and Yatsak Rabin were both present as the Zionist representatives, Israel has demonstrated that it will do anything it can and needs to do in order to push the United States in its direction. Um, however, we also have tre treasonous people inside of the Department of Defense. We have people that were going to fake an Iranian missile attack on a USS uh, on the USS Vincennes, which was moved into the Gulf of Hormuz to be a target, and that's why Barack Obama fired uh, a Navy Admiral and Jim Mattis, because we actually have people in the U.S. military that are willing to stage false flag events in order to start wars. Um, I cannot overstate the shallowness and unprofessionalism of the FBI, good people notwithstanding, and the lack of counterintelligence in the United States of America. We simply don't take it seriously. From Freemasons and Knights of Malta to dual U.S. citizens uh, who are loyal to Israel, uh, to people who will do anything for money, to people who have been entrapped with pedophilia, the standard entrapment is they go to bed drunk with a legal age blonde and they wake up with a 12-year-old kid. Um, you know, all of this stuff is very, very bad. We are not a healthy nation. Our government lacks intelligence, integrity, and imagination. And it's only now, and this is why I feel very positive, and I want to end on a positive note. The American people are waking up. Pizzagate was an eye-opener. People are starting to realize that the depravity of the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, the Pentecostalists, all of these people are dirty, dirty, dirty. And I will emphasize, I don't think you've mentioned that I'm a commissioner on the Judicial Commission of Inquiry into Human Trafficking and Child Sex Abuse. Every single U.S. governor across the United States of America and every single past U.S. governor is complicit in covering up child sex, child torture, and child murder across America. And that is what's going to bring the U.S. government down, not 9-11. Yeah, if I could only add, um, you know, as a Catholic, you know, in studying what we, what we would deem to be this apostasy, we, we really have deduced it to being this Marxist Masonic infiltration of the church. Um, you know, for example, I believe that uh, Francis is a high ranking Freemason. So I think we would distinguish, you know, the reality between is it the church or is it these Masons in the church which are playing possum, basically. And that's I think that's what we would argue, Robert, is that the church has essentially been hijacked and it's simply being used as opposed to it. Well, let me let me let me throw a curve at you. Uh, first off, you need to read Eric Zeus's Christ, Christ Ventriloquist, which basically makes the case that Paul made it all up. Um, and that Jesus did not write or say any of the stuff that's in the Gospels. Uh, but the other thing that's really interesting, I just ordered a book from, um, from Amazon, um, uh, which I'm looking up the title right now. Where are my orders? Um, there is a book that I just ordered, which talks about how the Catholic Church was actually created by Caesar as a false flag, uh, as a um, well, I don't want to turn it into a, a theological debate. As Catholics, obviously, we wouldn't hold. All right. That. Well, then let me just say, John Caputo's <laughs> book. Um, what is his book? God, it's called The Truth. Now I'm having a brain fart here. All right, Amazon just sucks. I'm really getting sick of them. Um, so, what do you want to talk about in the closing minutes? Yeah, let, let's close it out here. Uh, besides focusing on the theological side. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a few more things as it relates to Trump. Let's say Trump is the real deal. Um, do you think there's any potentiality of him getting knocked out like JFK? We've seen uh, recently uh, some news reports that he's been with Stormy Daniels. I've had uh, a guest come on the show, Conchita Sarnoff, who, who links him personally to pe Pedophile Island and Epstein. Whether that's a distraction or not, I don't know. She's a well-respected journalist in her own right. Uh, so there actually be some who would, who would link Trump in on this type of uh, activity, if you will. Uh, I'm not saying personally that's me. I'm saying what I've had other guests on the show saying that. But let's say he is the real deal. I, is there any potentiality of him, him getting wiped out? What would be the I don't after? think I don't think Trump will be assassinated because that would that would really wake the American public up. Uh, the deep state, I think, knows that Trump is his own worst enemy on the personal sexual front. Uh, he cheated on his wife when she was pregnant. Uh, he released her photos to the media for his own self-aggrandizement, and he has been until recently sleeping with someone in the White House, not his wife. 
Uh, so he's his own worst enemy. Having said that, I still think he's potentially the greatest president ever. However, he has got to make the jump away from the Republican Party, which is his worst enemy. Neither the Republican nor the Democratic parties are going to deliver a government that works. And the intelligence community is pathologically insane, dysfunctional. If Trump wants to be the greatest president ever, he has to have an election reform act, an open source agency, and a grand strategy. I know that Jim Mattis and Jim Kelly know what a grand strategy is. Therefore, they are seriously misserving the president by not presenting him with a grand strategy. A grand strategy would, among other things, address all 10 high-level threats to the United States of America. And I guarantee you, neither of these two gentlemen can do what I'm about to do which is name them in alphabetical order, in actually priority order. Poverty, infectious disease, environmental degradation, interstate conflict, civil war, genocide, other atrocities, including human trafficking, proliferation, terrorism, transnational crime. Until you show me a national strategy that addresses all 10 of those, beginning in Texas and New York and California, you are a traitor to the public interest. Yeah, interesting. Wow, great stuff today from Robert David Steele. I know you're busy, sir. I'm going to let you go here in a second. I want to allow you the last few minutes to tell us what else is hot on your radar and to do a little sh uh, shameless self-promotion, I call it. So you can get out all your websites, all your books, whatever you'd like to get out, social media, and then I'll close out the show. But thank you for coming on, Robert, today. And, 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 and uh, Well, getting... it's, it's my pleasure. And let me also tell you that even though I'm a lapsed Catholic, incense and the Latin Mass still do it for me. Um, and, uh, and I would love to see the Catholic Church restore its integrity. Right now, my best guess is that one out of ten priests are absolute practicing pedophiles. Um, and, of course, all the cardinals and bishops are covering up for them. RobertDavidSteele.com is my life's work. Everything I've ever done is free online. I would certainly be glad for donations. Um, I have three priorities in the next year. One is to help Donald Trump understand the three moves in 90 days. That's a Trump triumph. The second is to uh, help this pedophilia commission create a library on child sex, child uh, torture, and child murder. People need to wake up to the reality that there's a pedophile on every block and a kill room every 10 blocks. And that includes the rural counties of America. My third priority but still my largest priority is the post-Google internet that cannot be censored or manipulated. If anyone wants to donate to me, and I don't take a salary, but I do have a lot of uh, web and travel expenses, it's uh, paypal.me forward slash earth intel. And what you get for that donation is an immediate email thank you and a conversation with me for as long as you wish. Absolutely. And again, I appreciate you coming on, Robert. I certainly appreciate your work as it relates to Zionism, uh, you know, always look forward to seeing what you have to, to, to talk about in that area and to my non-Catholic audience. And again, I primarily reach a, a non-Catholic audience for those who are listening in the first time. Again, we're seeing all over the alternative media. Um, at the message of Fatima, basically in 1917, was forewarning of this apostasy and these Masons and Marxists infiltrating the church and reaching the upper echelons, uh, Cardinal uh, Odi, uh, um, Char Cardinal Chiappi, all forewarned that a pope, a quote-unquote pope, would literally be under the control of Lucifer in the end. And I think it's uh, safe to say what we're seeing with Francis that we have hit that point. But my point to, to uh, respond back to what Robert had said, yes, in this message, it, it talks about a rebirth of the Catholic Church. There will be a formalized one-world religion established in Rome, the Catholic Church, and Christianity in general are going underground, but we will resurface, if you will, on the other side of the storm. Uh, my good friends, again, get to Robert's website, robertdavidsteel.com. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, visit tradcatnight.blogspot.com daily. Again, click that PayPal button. Get behind me in this information war. Certainly appreciate all your prayers and support. And I've got another big guest lined up for you tomorrow. Actually, an, an awesome February. Uh, some of the top-notch guests coming out onto the show. And uh, my good friends, uh, as Robert mentioned before, we want to leave on a, a sour note, if you will. As eagles, we fly by the motto, faith over fear. So keep your wings spread in faith and hope, and do not succumb to despair. And until next time, stay safe and God bless.